Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've been well. I understand that there's a lot of things going on right now in society and in life. And I just wanted to be a part of the process to help some people gain an understanding of a comforter that I've been able to learn about in my own life. I've been able to find that Jesus in my life has been instrumental in me being able to manage and function things in a way where I have so much peace and love in my heart and in my life and in my world that no matter the storm or the circumstances, it doesn't feel like it's too much for me to bear because I know that I'm not bearing that on my own. So one of the things that I wanted to be able to do was um, go into some of the scriptures because the scriptures, there's a lot of power and wisdom in the word of God, things that can help you to understand different things in life, but also to understand society and because it is the mind of God and, and it's inspired by God, there's a certain amount of inspiration that's internal that's just resonant with you from one day to the next or one person to the next. There's a million different meanings that you can get out of a, a passage. So as I was reading through John, um, it was actually last night, I stumbled on something that I thought was pretty profane and something in my spirit showed me there's something that I can provide in terms of a message for some people. And this message, um, I think is very relevant to the times, but not just these times that we're going through with COVID-19, but really just about any time in our life where there has been marginalized people or people whose voice has been suppressed or stereotypes placed on people. We do this in society for a number of reasons, um, class, race, gender, disability, age, um, you name it. In the passage that I'm about to read, you're going to get a grasp and an understanding that this has to do with location um, and where somebody is from. And I think that this is going to be something for us all to take into perspective into our own lives but to also put out um a word that speaks to the fact that you can't judge people uh you can't judge people based on those things you can't judge people based on where they come from sometimes the most beautiful beautiful individuals come out of places where they lack resources or all odds have been against them so I'm going to go ahead and start now. It's You can turn to, if you have your Bible with you, you can turn to John chapter 1. And we're going to start at, we'll just start at verse 43. And we'll go to 47 to start. Okay, 43 to 47, chapter 1. I'm going to have to move this light out of my face. Oh. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. And Jesus said, Nathanael, coming towards him, and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, then you were under the fig tree, and I saw you. So, in context, I want to start with just a little bit of what was going on. Jesus had just been baptized from John, and John knew that this is the Son of God. The He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And Jesus, at this moment, 
it was like he started to gather his team together. And we're not, I'm not really sure how long in time that it took. Uh, I'm sure, you know, this was a process, but the way it kind of looks in the Bible is it kind of happened pretty fast. It was like within days, he just started to gather his disciples. So when he, and en- when he ended up going to Galilee, um, being that he is from Nazareth, right? But he went to Galilee, so he traveled. There was something that drew him here, there to travel. And he told people, he told certain disciples to follow him. And then they went to Bethsaida. So he didn't just stay in his hometown that he was brought up in or raised in. He actually left out to go and find his disciples. So one of the things that ends up being profound is when Nathaniel says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And then Philip's like, come and see. Because there must have been a context around Nazareth. Um, it, due to Jesus' humility, we know that he was born in a major. We know that his life from day one was not necessarily something that a, a king, in the, in the sense of what a king would be on the earth, would have been born into. And that's important to understand is that the place where he was coming from, people did not believe that there was worth and there was value in that space. They didn't see Nazareth being a place where God was going to raise a king up or any king for that matter. So in context, Jesus is looking for his disciples in places where they didn't know who he was growing up. And here he comes to do something great. And he's picking people to come and follow him. So he's finding individuals and their sense of what Nazareth was like was completely different than the man that they met. And I feel like this was so profound because too many times people are labeled with certain kinds of stereotypes which are just not true. And the communities which bear the burdens of those experience huge exploitation, they experience huge bits of marginalization, abuse, even abuse from authorities like police officers in some cases. And when we see somebody rise up out of this concrete, as as Tupac would say, the rose out of the concrete, we see that there's a profound capability to keep moving forward despite what anybody else has to say about him. He pretty probably, in my eyes, I would think that Jesus kind of knew that there were these stereotypes already and that people were going to prejudge him in certain ways. And as you see throughout the Bible, there was a lot of judgment that Jesus ended up bearing the burden of. But where he, where he came from put him in a place of, I would almost say, humility. It put him in a place to trust in God and knowing that he's God's son. And that no matter what people say, that bears no burden on who he is. And that's the same for us because we are God's children. We are. We are made in God's image. No matter how we look at it, we are made from a creator. And no matter what anybody has to say or what opinions that people have of us, we have to know that the creator that's inside of us is greater than he that's in the world. He that's in the world has come to destroy us. When you see stereotypes and you see marginalization and discrimination and racism and classism, you're seeing parts of the devil flat out. There's different kinds of evil that gets into people's belief system. Sometimes it's, you know, they're raised with it. They believe that they're right. They don't give people the opportunity to to be who they are. And we're seeing a lot of the, we see a lot of people set expectations on people. We see this in the school system. I expect you to be a certain way. So I don't give you all the work that you could possibly be able to do. I give you only fragments because I'm more concerned about my own self-interest and looking good for other people. I'm looking good for the board of education. I'm looking good for everybody. I want to be held in high regards with all A's in my class or A's and B's. Instead of challenging the individuals that are sitting in front of us that we can be a part of their world in a way that we help them rise to the occasion or they help us rise to the occasion if we've come out of that 
situation. So just because somebody isn't holding you to a certain expectation, know that God can hold you in a higher place and have a higher worth and value on your life. <clears throat> and trust that that higher worth and value means the world to God. This is when you start to think about your purpose and what you're destined to do. There is nobody in this world that can stop you from your destiny but yourself. And when Jesus, when, when Nathaniel looked at Jesus, he, his comment is enough for us to understand that if that happened to Jesus, what, is hap what can happen to us? We're not excluded from the judgment. We're not excluded from our upbringings, right? But we can rise to a place because we know that God has a higher expectation for us to be able to, to be more than what other people think that we're going to be or expect us to be. So for anybody that's in a position where they're, where they're feeling marginalized, really understand that God has a higher purpose for you and to not buy into the stereotypes or the false expectations, really the false narrative that's being placed on you. Because that false narrative is, is really just a narrative and you can rewrite your story and change it anytime. And just when you need to take a breath, when, when all these things might be coming at you, take a breath and realize that some of these things aren't yours to bear. And this goes for people that are judgmental and marginalize other people or in maybe even in their mind, they don't think that they're directly doing it, but they're setting expectations for people based on stereotypes. They're not holding people up to a higher standard of humanness. You really need to think about the devil and how the devil plays a role. Not saying that you are evil, but we're all susceptible to the whispers of the devil. There, there's nobody on this planet that is excluded from that. And the belief systems that we hold on to sometimes are not of God. These belief systems that are of the people and of, from a human flesh place are um, bonds. They're, they're um, chains. They're strongholds to stop you from being able to be one with others, to really learn the beautiful innateness of culture and humanity and love. When, when you are in a place where you're being stereotypical or discriminatory, what you're doing is you're cutting yourself off from a whole host of people that could be instrumental in helping you serve your purpose in life and you serving your purpose in their life. Is that God's will? Ask yourself, are these the thoughts of a mind of God's child? We know that we may not have the thoughts completely of God, but we know certain things inside of us are right and wrong. And the things that are man-made come to pass. And we're seeing that on a physical level. But it, just with COVID-19 and all the things with capitalism and the stock markets, but on a spiritual level, I want you to take a look inside and really get a grasp on what that means for you. You don't want to fall apart and be broken because you're basing your beliefs and your life on the flesh. The flesh comes to an end. We're, we're not meant to be here on this planet for ever. You, you just don't. You, we know that death is a part of life. So if you're spending one minute in a place of bitterness or hatred and you're hurting other people, you are not serving the will of God. You are bound by the flesh. You are, you are locked in a cage in a prison in your own mind. This is why it's also important to understand for anybody that's experiencing that, that these people are suffering that do those things. These people are suffering in a way and it's, it's hard to want to have love for people who are hurtful and painful to you and put you down. This doesn't, this doesn't just go for external people, for stereotypes um, in the world, right? Sometimes the worst hurts and pains can come from those inside our family, those in our friendships, in our circles of friends, our employers, and what they allow us to do in our jobs, how far they allow us to go to, to be creative to be who we're destined to be. 
That's why a lot of people turn to entrepreneurship. Right? A lot of people turn to not having an authority figure over them because they know that their purpose is greater than the person that's sitting in front of them and putting those expectations on them that are very small, not challenging. They don't believe in them. They're reducing their responsibility. They're reducing their capability. They're not challenging their, their mind. This is also why you see a whole big gig force. Yes, part of it was developed out of necessity, but that's probably one of the best things that could have ever happened. Otherwise, we'd be slaves and, and bond servants to corporations solely. Imagine if there wasn't small business, right? So we have to look in context of family, friends, employers. And when it does come to your family and, and there's this extra added influence into how people maybe judge you for your decisions, when you go to God and you take it to God, you'll feel the strength come inside of you. If you can, take a hand and just place it on your heart. And take a few breaths. And I just want you to gently talk to God. Allow yourself to just maybe feel in your heart that God speaks to you or that you're speaking to God. And anything that's on your mind, any words that don't have even descriptions that you know how to describe, I want you to just give it to God as it is, messy and all. Just take a few breaths and be intentional about really, really connecting to God. You may not know right this second what God wants of your life, but do know that you are put on this planet and you have value and worth. It doesn't what, matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter the life that you've lived before. It doesn't matter how judgmental people are. Jesus came for the sinners, and that's part of the reason that he was crucified. There were people that thought they were better than other people, and he grew up with it in an environment like that where he was judged and stereotyped. Remember, this is the king of all kings. And because he befriended sinners, and he spoke to them the same way that he would speak to anybody in the in a tabernacle or a, a space where they talk about God and giving them all this beautiful word to enhance their lives so that they wouldn't be slaves, so they wouldn't be bond servants to this world. That's part of the reason he died for us is he gave us this wisdom. Know that you're worth it. I don't care where you've gone, how far you've gone. I don't care if you've done drugs all your life. I don't care if you've been picture perfect all your life and you have no debt and you've paid every bill on time. I don't care if you're a president of the United States, if you're a governor of some place, a minister. I don't even care if you're a pastor. We all have a past. I don't care if you're out the streets. God comes for you. God, oh God, how God wants you. There's something about coming from a place of nothing against all odds and rising above that that makes you the perfect vessel for God to use. There's something about you being relatable and lovable and you just don't know how much God loves you. In your hand right now, I want you to just really continue to place that hand on that heart and just notice that essentially God is inside of you in every cell of your body. He's your creator. And when you place that hand on your heart, you're placing that hand on your temple and just feel that power. And breathe in and out.
nothing to do and nowhere to go. Surrender in a sense your stronghold to him, your flesh. And again, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. If you're somebody who's being stereotyped or you're the person that has maybe been stere stereotypical and, and placed these things and judgments on people, know that God is there for you. God can wipe that out in a moment. It doesn't matter where you've been or, or what you've done. God forgives and will bring you up out of that to be a a beacon and a vessel, God uses those that have gone through the trenches, those who come around and no longer want to be who they were. He provides a way. It's a new, it's a new renewing of the mind. It's a new way of being, a new way of feeling sometimes. But it's just a process. All you have to do is ask God to come into your world, not in a fancy way. Let's pray. Father God, please look over whomever's watching this video at this moment. We know that people sit on different sides of the fence and that you see everything. We know that you know all things. And we know that there is a purpose and a genuine beauty that comes out of places where some people feel it's dark. We know that these places are physical we also know that these places can be emotional as well as spiritual, Jesus. We pray that we understand that from your experience that we too can seek God, knowing that you are God's son and that you went through different things. We know that we might be disobedient and have disobeyed your word. We may have disobeyed the nature of our humanity by judging other people, or we've been a set on a level of expectation where we did not rise above what somebody else set for us, but we complied with it. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray that you just continue to bless us and watch over us and that each day of our lives becomes instrumental that you can use us and that we see your purpose and your will. Father God, keep us strong. Allow us to know who we are and have a sense of who we are. Allow us to not be condemned by others and allow that to come into our world where we use that as our identity. We are not entitled to also treat other people in the same ways where we impose identities on them. Allow this to be something where we understand the give and take in our lives knowing that from a higher place and a higher understanding, God, that you are more than that. You do not judge us in those ways because when you forgive us, you told us that our sins are forgiven and we are washed clean. Allow us to walk confidently in that. Allow us to commit to that. Allow us to know that you are everything within inside of us. Let not our hearts and our souls and our jealousy sometimes take over us. Let us be honest with you that things exist inside of us so that we can finally come to get rid of those things, cleaning them out, cleaning out the closet, knowing that we all have things inside of our closet and that we need to let go of. And in Jesus' name, we just want to say that we are so grateful. We are so grateful for all the things that you've given us and for this ability to rise above and for this word to show us the way, the truth, and the light allowing this knowledge and this education to be at our fingertips and accessible to us. We know that we don't have to be rich to obtain this. And we know that you are 
You do not regard people or man based on wealth or stature, race, ethnicity, gender. You do not look at people according to the way they look on the outside, but to their heart. You know the ways and the hearts of every man, woman, and child, and animal in this world, and every living being. And I just want to thank you for that today, because we know that we do not have to answer to other people, but we do answer to you, and Father, that you are true to us. And that we understand that your will is greater than any will that we can have in this world that we impose on ourselves or imposed by another man or person or company. And I thank you for this word today. Please touch the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name, Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you.